If you're just starting your preparedness journey, you have probably asked yourself questions like, what kind of food should I store? Where do I store it? How do I store it? Those are super common for people getting started. And even honestly, for those of us who are further along in our preparedness journey, food storage is always something that I think we are thinking about and trying to figure out how to master to really feel confident regardless of the situation that is at hand. So today we're gonna to start a four part video series all about short term food storage. We're going to talk about what you need to store, how you can store it, where you can store it, and then how you know how much food you should store for your family moving forward. Today, I'm just gonna talk about a six step process that you can use to get a really clear list of the food that you should store for your family for a short term emergency. So today I just wanna unpack short-term food storage. And when I say short-term, for me, that means anything up to about 30 days. Now, if you are new to this, you are probably thinking to yourself, Laura, are you kidding? I can't eat for two or three days out of my pantry right now, and that is okay. We're gonna talk about how we move along this path so that you can feel really confident to build out that food storage plan, whether it is just for a week or two weeks or 30 days or longer. I think one of the most common questions I get is, Laura, what food should I store? And again, what I will tell you is I don't know because I don't know your family's food preferences. I don't know your family's allergies. I don't know what you guys enjoy. I don't know what you guys don't enjoy. So I can't just give you a list like I do in some things where I go, go buy these 15 items and you'll be set because I don't know what your family eats. And what we don't wanna do is buy a bunch of food that our family doesn't like or doesn't enjoy. And then in a stressful situation, we're trying to eat things we don't even like. And when we get started, I think one of the most common things to do is just to type in and go, what should I be storing for emergencies, right? And we come up with these really long lists. So if I come over here right now and just type in survival food list, I am gonna to find tons of checklists that tell me what kind of food I should store for any emergencies. So the list I just pulled up, it talks about water, canned food, energy bars or granola bars, talks about peanut butter and other nut butters, talks about crackers and chips and pantry snacks and then dried fruits and nuts, powdered milk, oatmeal, cereal, jellies, jams, etc. I am guessing if you have done any research at all, you have stumbled across a list like this. And I will tell you what I did when I first started is I took that list and I ran out to Sam's Club and I bought a bunch of food and I put it in my pantry and I went, Phew. I'm safe. And then what I found is six months later and a year later, I had not eaten any of that food and I ended up having to throw out quite a bit of stuff. So after I had to throw out all of that food and I realized, hey, just following someone else's list is not really getting me to where I wanna be in terms of food storage, I started really trying to break down what is it that I wanted to store and how was I gonna store it? So let's get into the six steps that I think you should take to really set your food storage up for success. The first one is just tracking the meals that your family already eats. Now I know this sounds pretty basic and it sounds simple, but the reality is is sometimes when we get into this prepping space, we feel like we have to change what we are storing for our food or like we have to have some completely different diet because someone said that is the kind of food we have to store. The reality is, is if we store the food that our family already eats, we're gonna be in a much better position in an emergency situation. First of all, we're much more likely to have those staples already on the shelves. Second of all, we're not inducing extra stress to our families by introducing weird foods or changing our diet in a stressful situation. So all you're gonna do is just track your meals for 14 days. Then what I want you to do is go through that list of 14 days and think to yourself, which meals on this list could be made shelf stable? And what I mean by that is when we think about shelf stable foods or foods that can last for up to 30 days, we wanna think about what we can do in terms of maybe rice or pasta or canned goods, things that are going to have that long shelf life that you hear people talk about. Spaghetti is a great option because obviously you can store pasta on the shelf for a long time and you can store jarred spaghetti sauce for a long time. So that's a perfect example of a meal. Now, if I am cooking that regularly on a normal weeknight, I'm probably pairing it with a fresh vegetable, a salad or something like that. In an emergency situation, I'm gonna wanna think about how do I get rid of some of those fresh foods and make alternatives for those. For me, with the spaghetti example, it's going to be having canned green beans with it because that still gives us a vegetable, but it is in a shelf-stable format. You're also gonna want things to think through things that are relatively easy to make because again, in a stressful emergency situation, you're not going to wanna be rolling out five course meals. So if you are a gourmet chef or you just love cooking and you like to spend an hour every night prepping your meals, you're probably gonna wanna think about how you can simplify those meals in the case of an emergency situation. Don't get too creative, don't get too fancy, right? 
think about basic meals that you like to eat and cook for your family. So the second step is just going to be creating your actual meal plan for emergency situations. Once you have that list kind of drawn out and you've thought through some of those things about which meals could be made shelf stable, you're just gonna create a menu item of seven days worth of food. And yes, I want you to actually write out your menu for this. I want you to write what you're gonna eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day. Also include things like snacks and treats. It is important to remember that we are going to want some of those things that maybe seem like treats sometimes, whether that's the Oreos, the instant pudding, whatever it is. For me, it's dark chocolate. Whatever your thing is that you're gonna to wanna to have to kind of give yourself those treats, you wanna build that into your menu as well. If you're really motivated, you can stretch that out to 14 days of food. Again, the beauty of using the meals that we already create is that you're gonna automatically have a built-in rotation system where you're using supplies on a regular basis and you don't have to worry about things going out of date. Now, here's the deal, guys. I put this off for a really long time. I had staples on my shelf and in my brain, I was like, I'm sure I can figure out what I'm going to cook. But here again is the reality. In a stressful situation, you are gonna wanna know what meals you can make easily without having to rummage through your pantry, without having to get creative. Under stress, we don't wanna have to be making new decisions. We don't wanna have to be thinking about hard things. We just wanna go, tonight, spaghetti, tomorrow, chicken pot pie. Like we just want to have those meals laid out for us. All right. The third step is just creating your ingredient list off of that main menu that you just created. So when you get that seven day menu or 14, if you're feeling super motivated, you're going to look at the recipes that you have on there for your meals. And you are just going to create an ingredient list of all of the things that you need to buy to be able to make those meals. Now, here's what I'm going to say. Start with a week, build to two weeks and then get to 30 days. Again, for some of you, 30 days is going to feel really overwhelming right at first. And I don't want it to, I want you to make incremental progress as you go. I want you to get the ingredients that you need to make the meals that you have on your plan and start small if you need to. All right. The fourth step is just deciding on that timeline. So again, you have heard me say it now a couple of times. I believe that everyone should have at least two weeks worth of food. So if you have created a seven day meal plan, you're just going to double the ingredients list and you know that you have all of the food for at least 14 days. If you're saving up for 30 days, you're going to multiply that by four, right? This is the simple math piece. The timeline is really going to depend on a number of factors, whether that is, you know, how big your family is, what your budget looks like, and just your comfort level for how much food that you want to have in the background. That's probably the easiest step in this. All right. The fifth one is something that I think we overlook a lot of times, and that is creating what I call your fast food kind of food storage options. This is going to be things like meals in a can or freeze dried meals. These are for the nights where you just don't feel like cooking. I really think this is an overlooked piece of food storage because the reality is if you are anything like me, you don't always want to cook every meal every day. Most of us don't live that way anymore. Yes, our grandparents did that. Maybe even our parents did that. But most of us don't cook every meal every day at our houses. That's just the reality of it. We order Uber Eats and have something delivered to the house. We go out. We aren't always cooking our meals. And there's going to be days when you are in an emergency situation where you just don't feel like cooking. And I think a lot of times we rely so heavily on the staples that we forget, hey, what are we going to do on the nights where we're like, I don't want to cook. So one of my best pieces of advice is just to have some freeze-dried meals on hand. If you are a camper or a hiker, you've probably had freeze-dried meals. These are a great option to kind of give you that fast food convenience at times when you just don't feel like cooking. A couple of notes with these. I love the mountain house meals. My husband and I really enjoy a lot of the different varieties of those, but take some time now to find the ones that your family enjoys. If you have a large family, buying them in these individual packets probably isn't going to be the best option for you. But the good news is, is that mountain house and other companies who make foods like these often have them in the number 10 cans where you're going to get a lot more servings per can than you would if you're just trying to buy individual packets. Another thing to note is that in these packets, if you start looking at serving size, you're going to realize that the calorie count for some of these is gonna be pretty low. So for instance, that granola package that I just held up says it serves two people for breakfast. But if you look at the calorie count, that's only 260 calories per person. If that was all I was eating for breakfast, that probably wouldn't sustain me in an emergency situation, particularly if I'm expending energy. So you're gonna to wanna to think about how do you bulk up on these or how do you have extra servings so that on those 
those fast food days, you are getting enough calories to, to sustain yourself. Another thing to think about is if you are buying these freeze dried meals, you're going to want to make sure that you have extra water planned into your storage because again, to make freeze dried meals, you have to have water. So that is going to increase the amount of water that you're going to need to store. So that is just something to keep in the back of your mind as well. All right. And the sixth step is just go shopping. What I don't want us to do is go through all of this work and make a list, make a menu, get the ingredient list together and then go, Oh yeah, I'm going to get to that. Or, Hey, next time I go grocery shopping, I'm going to do a thing. Go ahead and figure out what it is that you are gonna allocate in terms of your budget and your time to get all of the things on your list. If you know you're making a Sam's or Costco run, some of my favorites, then you're just gonna wanna put those things on your list and figure out how much money you're comfortable spending at any given time. Be really intentional. Make sure if you're spreading the food out that you are at least buying all of the ingredients for one or two of the meals on your menu at a time. And why I say that is because it's really easy to go out and buy things in bulk where I'm like, oh, I'm gonna go buy some black beans today and then realize that that I don't have any of the ingredients for my chicken pot pie and I have enough beans to last me for six months, right? So be intentional when you go out shopping that you're buying all of the ingredients together that are going to make a complete meal. Don't spread it so thin where you only have bits and pieces from all of the meals because then if you find yourself in an emergency before you've been able to finish your shopping, you're still not going to be able to eat very well. So be intentional with that shopping plan. If you enjoyed this video and you feel like it added value, do me a favor, hit subscribe, hit like. I would love for you to join me on this journey. And again, until next time, let's be prepared, not scared.